You know, Dan mentioned some of the key evidence coming out in the trial comes from those police interrogation tapes, the kind of interrogation made famous during the murder trial of former Colonel Russell Williams. So how do you break someone during an interrogation? Earlier today, I sat down with Dave Perry. He's a former investigator and interrogator with the Toronto Police to get his insight on the fine art of a police interrogation. Dave, give me, I just want to know, when you sit down with somebody to begin your interrogation, what is the strategy going in? Well, the strategy really depends on the situation you have before you. But I can tell you the first thing you want to do is develop a rapport with the individual that you're interviewing. You want them to tell you, for them to tell you their deepest, darkest secret. But there's no guarantee they're going to do that. So, I mean, what is it? Is it, is it that you want to portray yourself as being a, a friendly ear, someone who's there to listen and understand? For sure. And I can tell you that... Um, you know, over 35 years of experience in this business, the best way to get somebody to talk to you is to develop that rapport. And you can do it quite quickly. And uh, we just talk about, you know, giving people the exact opposite of what they're expecting when they walk into an interview. Now, if you're interviewing about a very serious matter, a murder, a homicide, I think people have an expectation that they are going to get interrogated and they're going to have aggressive techniques you know, used against them. And when they get the opposite, that automatically sets the tone and starts you well on your path to building a rapport with that individual. If you do it right, by the time you finish, even though they've confessed and they know that perhaps they're going away for the rest of their lives, they will actually thank you. And they're thanking you for treating you much differently than what they expected. Wow. I did not expect that. Okay, now it's interesting. You're all about building rapport. So I want to pick up here in, in the first clip that we've selected for you. Because okay. if rapport is the name of the game here, I want you to tell me what you see when they begin their conversation sure. So I think what the interviewer is doing here is trying to understand her needs. And that's a really important component of any kind of an interview process. Again, she's not hammering her with questions and being aggressive and, and in your face, uh, you know, using interrogation. She's actually, I think she's showing a lot of empathy here. Mm -hmm. She's got her own, the interviewer herself has her tone and her pitch down to the same level as the subject of the interview. And that's really an important piece. What do you see? I'm looking at the body language here. What do right. you see in terms of somebody who is willing to open up their deepest, darkest secrets? Right now, at a glance, we've got somebody who's closed off and perhaps not ready to talk at this particular point. That's what I'm seeing from this this person in the video. Okay. <laughs> so this is a photo of family, family photo, family album of mm -hmm. photos of her children. Yeah, and obviously getting a very strong reaction here. <laughs> And I would suggest that's a strategy. That's not something that just happened. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's had quite an impact on this individual. So now the interviewer needs to move in and find out what this is all about. You say it's a strategy. What's the strategy here? The strategy is to break through what we saw previously with the arms crossed and somebody not willing to really cooperate or participate. And by simply showing photographs of the family and getting that emotional response from this woman, you're, you're far more likely to, to get some cooperation. I, my guess is that's probably what's going to happen fairly soon now. <laughs> Clearly, the interviewer believes that she has information that she's withholding. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, homicide investigations and homicide interviews are not a picnic. This is tough stuff even for me to watch, and I've walked this walk before. But I'll tell you, when you get into a room and this involves the murder of four young women, uh, somebody's got to find out what's happened here. And, and he's using some what I would call fairly advanced techniques to get her to open up. Well, let's see what he does to try to get that final piece of information. That's the man. That's the man. Quite often, people will confess when you, you know, liken the interview to somebody deserving to know 
the truth. Mm. And right now he's he's saying that your your daughters deserve for us to know the truth. They deserve for you to tell me exactly what happened here. And that's a very good technique. It, it appears to me that she's softening at this particular point. Right. Again, very advanced techniques when you start getting personal and holding somebody's hand in an interview. Uh, we don't teach that to, to you know the sort of front line new entry officers, but in advanced homicide interviews and sexual assault interviews, we'll use these kinds of techniques. And as long as we don't cross a line, sure. uh, she's not resisting to the hand holding. Uh, right. She didn't want to be kissed. She didn't want her hand to be kissed. There are some cultural things that are probably happening here too. Right. And as interviews, we have to be aware of the cultural sensitivities when we're interviewing people. But a glance here, uh, this interviewer is now moving in and trying to get this woman to what we call the defeated posture where she's about to confess and then uh, yes again to eventually uh, tell him exactly what happened. I think he's pretty close here. So overall, if you look at uh, where, we, where we've come and sort of the evolution of this, started with a woman with that close posture and now with someone who is almost in that defeated posture. You mm -hmm. can see her body is now loosening up. Eye contact, it looks like we're almost there. It certainly does. Yeah. So he's been a good, from what you've observed, and this has been very effective? Yes. Uh, and, you know, just if you look at the way she's sitting, when you're square on to somebody, it's a lot more difficult to lie to them. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons we like to sit square with people when we're interviewing, to make sure that we are getting the truth. You and I are having a very casual conversation, but it's, it's easy, even being as close as we are, to have this conversation because we're both telling the truth. Um, if one of us was lying here, this wouldn't be as easy for that person to sit square on, look the person in the eye, and to continue to lie. So when you look at the change in the body position and, and the, the nonverbals that are happening here, um, I would suggest that you know she's pretty close here. And I have learned that I would never want to lie to you. Perhaps not. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you.